Hi, and welcome to Cool Gadgets and Stuff. Today we are going to review the iArcade, the new home arcade cabinet that boasts its own online market and community. I want to go ahead and thank iArcade for providing us this unit in return for our honest review. Anyhow, I am really excited about this one, so let's go ahead and get started. The iArcade is made of high quality wood and is well designed. It's able to be put together in less than an hour and has a professional feel to it that you don't see in other cabinets. The dimensions are something special. At first, the cabinet appears to be too small, at least width-wise. However, it's surprisingly easy to play even with two adults. You can tell a lot of care was taken when designing the iArcade. It can fit almost anywhere but feels like a large full-size cabinet. The full-size cabinet includes both the stand and the bar top measuring 20 by 21.5 inches with a 61 inch height and the bar top itself being 24 inches tall. Basically, it's a great height. Smaller kids, maybe under 10 or 11, will probably need a step stool or something to sit on, but adults should have no issues. I'm 6'2 and the cabinet was comfortable to stand at for long periods of time. One of the main things that popped for me was this screen. It's a 19 inch LCD and it's absolutely gorgeous. It has a 4x3 aspect ratio and a 1280 by 1025 resolution. I don't think I can say enough good things about this monitor. It's crisp, clear, and breathes new life into these retro classics. As I said earlier, there are a few different models for the iArcade. The Black Edition and Dragon's Lair model include Sanwa joysticks while the base model includes what the company is calling Sanwa-like joysticks. I was pretty concerned about this considering if you order the stand and the bar top you are paying $750, and the upgraded special edition models are only $50 more at $800. These not only come with Sanwa joysticks, but they also come with special art and twice the amount of storage. So if you are planning on buying the stand and the bar top, you might as well spend $50 more and get the Black or Dragon's Lair edition. With all that being said, the Sanwa-like joysticks are pretty fantastic. There is a difference, but not a huge one, and they are both quick and responsive. I would be remiss if I didn't bring up the speakers here as well. This thing bumps, it sports a stereo speaker system that pushes over 100 watts with a dedicated amplifier. It sounds great, and after the recent update allowing more steps of volume, I have no complaints. Just to run through the rest of the specs real quick, we have a 1.8 GHz hexacore processor, an 800 MHz max quad-core GPU, and 4 GB of dual-channel LPDDR4X memory. The base model comes with 64 gigs of space, and the upgraded Black Edition or Dragon's Lair model comes with 128 gigs. These specs easily handle everything I have tried so far, including some of the newer games available through the store. The optional stand has been a great addition, but is an extra cost that won't be necessary for everyone. The stand is made of the same material as the bar top and is just as sturdy. You can easily detach the bar top with the included hand screws, take it off, and set it up somewhere else. The rubber feet also stay attached to the bar top so it can easily be set up on a table, and the stand has cutouts that hold the feet in place, helping stabilize the entire arcade. While I don't see much use for this, having the ability to pop off the bar top in under 10 minutes and move it, say outside for a get together, could come in handy. The software appears to be a custom version of Android and it runs decently enough. There have been a few hiccups, but everything that I have come across has been quickly fixed with a patch. The software could be more responsive and I am not a huge fan of the user interface, but overall it's not terrible. Adding in a favorite section or a recently purchased tab would also help with navigation, especially once more games are added. Purchasing games is pretty straightforward, and I recommend using a web browser. Don't get me wrong, there is nothing wrong with the app, but as of right now I don't think it's available on iOS, and it's the exact same experience you get through the website. I just saved a link to the web page on my phone and access it that way. Other than that, one of the best things about the iArcade is that every game is licensed to be used on this device. This means that all games will work, are the right game, and are 100% legal. It also means that if there are any issues, they will be addressed and fixed. Being a connected machine comes with a ton of benefits. 
most of which are pretty easy to figure out. Just to be clear though, only one of the games I have found so far has online play. That game is Bomb Squad. As more games are added, especially newer ones, we could see more online content becoming available. But for right now, at least for the most part, being connected means updates to the software, firmware, and available games list. Anyhow, let's move on and talk about that game selection just a little bit. The long story short here is I was really worried about the available games. I had only heard of a handful of them and thought many of the other titles wouldn't be very good. I was wrong. Almost all of the games I have had the chance to play are a blast. I found that many of the titles were popular, just not in my area, which makes sense and is pretty cool anyhow since I am getting the chance to explore some great games I never had the chance to play. With the current hardware, the potential here is pretty endless, and there are a ton of games to choose from. The types of games range from old school arcade classics like Strikers 1945 and Load Runner, to newer more modern titles like Dead Cells and Evoland. There is even an FPS called Dead Effect 2. Here you use both of the joysticks to play and it works surprisingly well. As I mentioned before, since all of the games are licensed they work great and if they don't they will be fixed, or you can work with customer service to return them. There is also a demo window of 30 minutes on all games which allows you to see if you'd even like to play it. For those looking for more information on what games are available, I will include a link to both the store and the list of upcoming confirmed games down in the description. After owning the iArcade for over a month I can honestly say that I love this machine. It runs great, is frequently updated, and has a ton of content to keep things going. It also has been a great device for family time, and I really enjoy playing games like Bomb Squad and OutZone with my son. One of the best things about the iArcade is the community. Jong, the CEO, hosts weekly updates talking about events, games, and pretty much anything else you can think of. His attitude and love for the iArcade is infectious and really brings a lot of joy to the entire experience. The community also hosts weekly tournaments that are officially supported by iArcade. These are high-score tournaments where the game changes each week. Winners receive prizes and there is a website that lists everyone's high score that I will link down below. Overall, the iArcade is a fantastic machine that is well worth the investment. I highly recommend this for anyone looking for an arcade cabinet, especially in this price range. The licensed content, frequent updates, community, and constant stream of games, both retro classics and new indie titles, sets the iArcade apart from other cabinets.